Welcome to Manny's TV Talk, where we will talk about all of our favorite reality TV shows and news surrounding them. Grab a snack, a drink, and get comfortable because this starts now. Hello, everybody, and welcome back. Today, we're going to be talking about the new episode of The Valley. Let's get right into this. I live for him. Literally, the only thing I even care about in this world. Get, don't cry. There's no reason. Well, That's it's the making alcohol. Me sad. There's no reason to be sad. I can't even have an emotion. No, you can't. You can't cry about something. Okay, you guys, it is episode seven of The Valley. We pick up with this dinner at the hotel. Kristen, Luke, Jesse, Michelle, they just all blew up on each other. Kristen left, and then in the lobby, she had met to producers that Michelle has been having a secret boyfriend for a while. Michelle then goes back to the dinner table, and she says to them, Kristen just told me that um, my husband's gonna leave me in two months. But as we all know from last week, Kristen got that mixed up. The T was that Michelle is gonna leave him in two months, but she kind of said it the other way around. Jesse is shocked and says, you know, the divorce has never even come out of my vocabulary. But you can see in Michelle's face that she knows what she knows. But Jesse then wants to ice out Kristen. He says to everyone that she doesn't belong into this group. And Janet's thirsty, messy pick me ass says, Well, Kristen is no longer invited to my things um when I do them. The next morning, Michelle brings some smoothies and she's at the house with Jesse. And they talk about last night. So they say that Kristen is a pathological liar, but Jesse is seeing this also kind of like a blessing in disguise because she says, well, this has kind of brought us closer together. But on the other hand, hearing things like, oh, Michelle has a secret or whatnot does make him feel some type of way. He says that he starts to overthink. For example, if when she's hanging out with the girls, she doesn't really post anything on her social medias. So he's wondering, is Michelle actually with them or is she with another man? She says, no, of course I'm not. But anyway, we see little glimpses of the couples. So we then see Janet. Janet is telling her husband, Jason, that whatever the secret between Jesse and Michelle is, Jax knows it because he told Jasmine and Jasmine told her. Now, Janet wants to, I guess, pick a problem with Jax. She brings up these rumors that Katie Maloney brought up about Jax. So Janet says, well, you know, Jax should be worried about the rumors about him instead of going around telling other people about Michelle's secret. She then says that she feels guilty knowing this information and not saying anything about it. As I said, she's messy, she's shady, and I feel bad for her husband. All right, then Kristen and Luke go to the doctor because Kristen and Luke have been having unprotected sex for a while. So she should have gone pregnant by now, but she hasn't. Her biggest fear is that she will be barren. But thankfully, they go, she gets checked, and the doctor tells her that all her falcals are exactly how they're supposed to. So they just got to keep trying. But that definitely made her feel a lot better. Then we go over to Jackson Brittany's house. The little boy is spending time with the speech therapist, but Jax is freaking out that Brittany is being loud as the little boy is trying to study. So they go outside. Jen and Jason popped over because they, they live super, super close, so they could just literally walk to their house. Of course, Janet can't help herself. So she says, Jax, I heard that you know what Kristen is protecting Michelle about. And Brittany's like, what do you know? And Jax says, well, Kristen told me about Michelle having a side dude. But again, Kristen could be making it up, he says. Then Jason want to tell Jax, well, man, you by you telling Jasmine, it kind of made it sound as if you believed it. I was just thinking, dude, control your wife's gossiping, first of all. But Janet says that Brittany knows too. And Brittany says, yeah, but I ain't saying anything about nobody. She also did bring up those rumors that Katie was spreading around, but she says to them that she doesn't believe them. We then see Mia and Danny taking their three kids to the park. Mia is feeling a little numb emotionally. She says that she's going to reach out to Sally, her sister-in-law, who mentors other women that are going through postpartum. So she actually stepped aside and called Sally and says that she has tried it all, but she can't seem to get over these baby blues. And Sally tells her, don't be ashamed if it happens to be something more than baby blues. So she's recommending that Nia goes to a professional and so that she could see what that professional recommends to her, maybe some medication, so that hopefully um, the, she can get over it. So then Jax and Brittany, we go to see them again. Jax takes her to a surprise. He takes her to a intimacy tantric sexpert. 
That's what the lady calls herself. This lady has crystals and smoke and whatnot and stuff to better their sex life. So they tell her that they've been really busy and they haven't really had sex. Brittany says that it's been over a month now. And the lady says that by feeling her energy, she doesn't feel like anyone's cheating right now. So then they start to do some exercises that are very intimate, like face each other, hold each other's hands, inhale, exhale, embrace. One thing that I think no one could deny is that they do love each other. That There's no question about that. And they even showed some flashbacks of their love story. They definitely feel connected in this exercise. But in her confessional, Brittany says that she feels like Jax doesn't try hard enough anymore. Then a little later, Jax, Luke, Jason go hang out there at a bowling alley, having some fun bowling. So they sort of had an intervention with poor Luke. They want him to feel bad for what Kristen quote unquote did and what she's doing to Jesse and Michelle. Jack says that Kristen is a known liar and Luke says to Jax, well so are you, you've admitted it when he was on Vanderpump Rules. And Jack says, that was a decade ago, I've grown. There's got to be a moment where it starts to click with you that what she's doing is wrong jack says to luke and luke says okay what jesse has done his reactions and actions have been bad and like it's been inappropriate but i could see how when you are under a lot of pressure and stress maybe other things that are said can get to you so he sort of realized that and he says that he is now going to talk to Kristen. Then we see a double date, Michelle, Jesse, Danny, and Mia. I'm glad that Danny and Mia are spending time together even after having newborn twins. And they're very physical with one another. They really show their affection. For example, when they cheered their drinks, they kissed and they say that's like a little thing that they do. It's it is kind of sweet. Meanwhile, Jesse and Michelle are just sitting there. They're like sucking the energy out of everything. One of the reasons why they actually are hanging out with them is because Danny and Nia are getting ready to leave that apartment and go get a house. They still need to figure out some things, but they're definitely moving towards that direction. And as we know, Michelle is a real estate agent. Michelle then brings up, oh, you know, Kristen, I feel so bad for not believing people that warn me about about her and then Nia starts to cry and she's crying because she's already going through so much stuff on her own life she really don't care about this messy drama but I felt so bad for her and she says I'm sorry it's just so much I feel like I can't control it I am glad though that Michelle did say like you can call me anytime she did try to comfort her in that moment this next scene was funny. Janet and Jason go over to Brittany and Jax's house because they're going to... Jax and Brittany are going out on a date and Jason and Janet are there to babysit their son. So that was funny seeing them try to control him because he's like two. So that's when they really are like jumping and running and doing all that. We then see Kristen and Luke. Luke tells her that, you know, he met with Jason and Jax and that people are upset about the things that she has said. The things that she says when she gets triggered that are not true sometimes. She kind of takes something and then puts a spin on it. And then that spin does have different implications when it's heard. She, um, she says, I agree. End of story. He says, but how do you feel? And she says, I agree that words can make things different. But when people have skeletons in their closet, it makes them very upset. And then he says, stop. Don't talk about skeletons in people's closet. Just say, I shouldn't have done this. I'm sorry, and don't have butts in it. If we want to move forward, that's something that can happen. And hearing the word if really freaked out Kristen. She's trying really hard to nip it in the bud. He was getting very frustrated about that. He was like, let's let's talk about the progress. She's like, okay, can we get over this now? So I understand both sides. He wants to help her, but she also doesn't want to talk about it right now. And I could see how that could be annoying to talk about. All right, last scene of the episode, Jax and Brittany had this wonderful hotel suite for them. They had a great view. There was some chefs that came to cook for them. And he starts to talk about the bar. He, She is worried that he will be there 24-7, but he says that he won't. They also talk about this second baby that they wanted to have a while ago. But Jax is now worried that having another child will take the focus away from from the child that they have right now that they need to put on. So Brittany gets emotional, starts to cry, and says, you know, I, we would never take the focus that he needs. She says, if you're not ready to have another kid, then just tell me because I live for my kid. That's all I care about. Then Jax, it sounded kind of rude. He's like, don't cry. 
And Brittany says, I can't even have an emotion. He says, no, about this, you cannot. This is the alcohol. He says, I need to work. You know, I won't have enough time to be with him like you will. And he says, I'm a planner. I like to plan things. And Brittany says, you don't even do anything. <laughs> gosh she said you don't even do anything and he says wow that's such a slap in the face so he gets up and walks out for a little bit and that was the end of the episode wow really good episode as i said as, as i keep saying every single week this show is really good i like that there's much more to it than just petty drama these are real conversations Brittany and Jax talking about having a second child that's real danny and nia talking about her postpartum that's real uh, Jesse and Michelle going through post, um, going through their marital issues. That's real. Uh, Kristen and Luke trying to have a kid. That's real. Like that's what I like about the show is that it does seem pretty uh, genuine and natural. But yeah, guys, let me know your thoughts about this sec about this episode. Please don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll catch y'all next time. You have a great one.